Hello everybody and welcome back to Ozymandias Conquest of the Outer Planets and we are here with the Julishka which has already entered the sphere of influence of Sarnus and now we have to get a rendezvous with uh, the Ozymandias itself in o at Ovok and therefore we have to do some maneuvering so first up we're going to use Slate's enormous gravity to catapult us closer to Sarnus and reduce our orbital velocity. So there we go, we got the maneuver node. Just skipping ahead, we're already in the sphere of influence of Slate. Some fine tuning and some minor adjustments. Getting an Elu encounter but trying to avoid it because if we would use that we would be accelerated and we don't want that. So passing by Slate and therefore also using the engines to execute the maneuver node. See the orbital path changing. That would be a neat tool for NASA if that worked like that in space. So skipping ahead a little bit more we're passing by Slate now. Hi Slate! You big bad lander killer of a planet. Well, planet, moon actually. Ooh! We are barely... <laughs> we barely missed Elu there. I told you there was an encounter coming. And now we are safe in orbit around Sarnus, but we still have to get a little bit... Uh, our apps down, so we don't cross paths with Slate again. And here we are adjusting our plane uh, so we can get closer to Ovok. Ovok of course having very low gravity, so yeah. I really have to be careful there. Because if, uh, since it has so low gravity, if you are not in the exact plane, then it's really hard to get an encounter because cause its gravity is so low it does not attract you and therefore you don't get an encounter. But this is looking rather good. So we'll skip ahead to the encounter itself. And yeah, I almost kind of missed it because... I thought, yeah, well, I have enough time to burn, and then I realized, hmm, the burn takes a little bit longer than I expected. And, as you can see here, I'm racing towards the periapse. And, for some reason, some wobbling is occurring, but that does not matter. And I'm still having way too much orbital velocity, so I'm very much in danger to skipping uh, past Ovok and I don't want that because I want to meet the Ozymandias and I want to give it its lander, well its second lander to be exact. So the engine light mod lighting up the night side of Ovok or rather the ship at the night side of Ovok. So we're almost gone, we're almost gone, this does not look good. Whoa! And suddenly we got an not only an encounter and not only an orbit, we reversed the orbit and we're now heading downwards. Well, that can be remedied. Thankfully Ovox gravity is so low that you can change uh, between prograde and retrograde with relatively little uh, delta V spending, as you can see here. So adjusting the orbit, as I said in one of the previous videos, about 20 kilometers is okay. And here it is, the Ozymandias itself, and it lifts off of Ovok after refueling its huge fuel storage capacities. About 19,000 units of liquid fuel can be carried in this vehicle. And we're using our nuclear engines to blast us into a stable orbit around Ovok. Attracting the landing gear, extending solar panels and radiators. So we get that signature up and running. Okay, trying to get a rendezvous. 
but not yet, so we have to circularize our orbit first. With relative ease. And align the solar panels square to the sun, so we can recharge our battery. There we go. And then it's time to do some rendezvousing, and I'm going to skip ahead of that because that's boring. So yeah, we got our orbital rendezvous with the Julishka. The legend meet, legends meet for the first time. Yeah, one big behemoth and the other one meeting up in orbit around a space egg. Well, who would have thought? So I'm trying to point the front docking ports towards each other, opening the shields and aligning the ship. And then of course, once again using my trusty docking port alignment indicator mod, well it's not mine, it's by Navyfish and it's really helpful. I would not want to dock without this one anymore. So yeah, we have to align it a little bit and play around with our rotation because we want to align the cargo base as well. Therefore, for some reason, the Julishka's docking port is 180 degrees in the other direction than, than that of the Ozymandias, but who cares? And here we have a beautiful picture slate between the tips of the spacecrafts. Would you look at that? Orbital mechanics can really be beautiful sometimes. And we're closing in. Almost ready to dock. I don't have any waltz music lying around, but hey, here we go. We have docked. And yeah, now we have to do several things. First of all, we have to do some... Uh, fuel transfer, because the Ozymandias has more monopropellants than the... Well, not no, the other way around. The Julikushka has more monopropellant than the Ozymandias. We have to transfer the lander, and then we have to transfer the fuel. So we have transferred the monoprop. Now it's time for the lander. So we activate it and use the RCS to get it out of the cargo bay. There it goes. Okay, so we have to get it out there. Yeah, just rename it. It's not the Julishka lander, of course. It's the Ozymandias lander. Maybe I should find a nice little name for that lander that kind of corresponds to Ozymandias. What do you think, guys and girls? Should I call it Walter? I'm in the right direction, so to speak. Well, orientation, rather. Uh, then we are heading towards the cargo bay. Translational controls firing. Just trying to use as few uh, RCS fuel as I can. Okay, I'm still going to have to refuel a little bit of that, but yeah, that's going to be a long time of stuff that I'm going to skip ahead, so you don't have to watch it. Okay, we're inside the cargo bay, heading toward the docking port, and yes, the Ozymandias once again has a lander. Okay, now, time for the boring fuel transfer stuff. So I really have to transfer a lot of fuel from the Ozymandias to the Julishka, so the Julishka can get back to Kerbin. And this will take a while. Okay, we have transferred fuel and the Julishka is about to leave. Just firing the RCS thrusters, well, the Vernier engines actually. Extending our solar panels. And then it's time to leave Ovok and to leave the Ozymandias and her crew to complete their mission. Their mission of science and exploration and adventure and maybe some explosions in the future. 
I don't know, I really don't hope so, because otherwise the mission will be failing and I don't want that. So getting towards the prograde vector, so I can blast away from that space egg. Doesn't really matter where you do that in this case, because Ovox gravity is so low, but yeah, I think I mentioned that Ovox gravity is low. Did I mention that Ovox, Ovox gravity is low? Yeah, Ovox gravity is low. Lower than Minmus, actually. I think it's half of that of Minmus or something. I don't know. Not as bad as Gilly, though. Look at that beautiful scenery. And now we... Whoa, okay. Some glitchy thing going on. Okay, what I'm trying to do here is use... Yes, we've got an Elu encounter. And we're using Elu to catapult us further away from Sarnus. And once we do that, maybe we get another encounter with Slade and then we are off to interplanetary space. In the meantime, while that is happening, you see the uh, alarm clock ticking on the left side. I'm going to use the lander to visit... Um, what's going on? Why is this sticking in there? What's the problem? Why d Hello? Please get out of there. Okay. Hmm. Strange phenomena around here. Okay. As I was saying, while uh, the Julishka is heading down uh, towards interplanetary space, I'm going to head towards Hale and then uh, back to Ovok. Maybe stop by at Elo in the meantime, not sure yet. And yeah, I'm going to explore those planets because I think the lander has enough Delta V to do that. I think it has 3700 something. So plane change for Hale. And we're back to the Ozyman Diaz, which is now performing its burn to get in contact with Elu. And since it's a longer burn, I'm going to extend all the solar panels. No, not the solar panels, all the radiators that I got, so I don't burn up. Good thing I put so many docking ports on this vehicle when I designed it back in the day. So now it can still work with Kerbal Space Program 104. Okay, ELO encounter coming up soon. Okay, we got it. And yeah, yes, we got our slate encounter already set up and beautiful. We're off to interplanetary space. And while that's happening, our brave scientist is enjoying the scenery. Look at that Sarnus glowing in the distance with its rings. I could look at that for hours, that's really beautiful. But we have a mission to fulfill and the mission is getting to Ovok. No, Hail first, of course. There we go, that's Hail there, that little rock inside one of the rings. So we got a periaps, we got an encounter and I skipped ahead towards the sphere of influence of Hale, where we're gathering science in high orbit around Kale. Uh, Hale. Kale, I'm hungry. But I really don't like Hale. Who cares? Okay, setting up our circularization burn. Thanks to the power of the aerospike and its massive thrust to weight ratio. We are already safely in orbit and we're gathering science, science and another bunch of science. Okay now, well, we also want to land this. But since it would take a very long time to get around on that orbit, you can see the amount of time on the top uh, bottom right corner. I thought, ah oh well, who needs Delta V anyway? So let's do something completely different and yeah, reverse our orbital trajectory, yay! So yeah, I put myself in a retrograde orbit so I can land on that illuminated place over there. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Thing is, 
this takes a bit longer than I would have liked since... yeah. It's a really slow descent. Elu there in the background. It's a really slow descent since there is not really much of gravity going on there on hail. And yeah, now we've set up our landing location basically. And this will take some time, so... Hmm, should I do it? Am I going to do what I think I'm going to do? Yes! Let's burn towards the planet! Yay, because I'm descending too slow! I wonder if any NASA astronaut actually would ever do that in real life. I highly doubt it, but then again... What do I know? I'm not an astronaut. Unfortunately. Really is kind of one of my dreams to sometimes get up there into space. But since I can't, or until I can, I'm going to play the heck out of Kerbal Space Program. I'm almost 2300 hours locked, uh, clocked in Steam. Okay, heading down, heading down. Heading down, down, down. Not in the ring of fire, but on a rock of almost no gravity. There we go, we're landed on one landing leg! Yay! So much for the gravity of hail. But we have to gather some more science and we have to get a surface sample. Whoa, stay there. Where are you going? Okay. Maybe I'm using the RCS to put it down. Okay, my brave Kerbal, please gather all the science you can get. What the heck are you doing? Well, we're going to gather that later on in orbit. What the hell? Oh well. Okay, we're enjoying the scenery. We're getting, gathering some science samples. We're planting a flag. And that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to see where we're heading next. I don't know yet. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.